And the final method is using LaTeX or Tech Mathematics. So Tech is even before the days of word processors, there were document formatters, which lets you type into a text document various markup instructions, much like HTML contains, uh, and that would then mark things up. And before we had sort of GUI-based word processors, we often prepared documents by uh, in an ordinary text editor using a markup scheme. Tech was one of the first really ambitious markup processors uh, devoted to uh, trying to accomplish what a good quality trained typesetter would be able to do when working with mathematics. Tech was written by Donald Knuth, one of the uh, better known names from the uh, say first half of the lifetime of computer science. Uh, Many of the algorithms that you have learned in your data structures and algorithms classes uh, probably came from Knuth or were publicized uh, and to the rest of the computer science community from Knuth's fundamental books on data structures and algorithms. But Knuth became fascinated with typesetting because it was such an expensive uh, and difficult process once mathematics was involved and he spent a lot of time studying how that actually worked and invented a program called Tech, uh, or actually it's probably supposed to be Tech because that X is actually the capital Greek Chi. Uh, and so it is, it is not Tex. We're not referencing uh, one of the southern states of the US here, but Tech. Uh, and that did what it did very well, particularly with mathematics, uh, it became even more popular when some other people sort of built another layer of programming on top of it and called that LaTeX, not LaTeX, but LaTeX, uh, which basically simplified the process of doing very ordinary stuff like adding titles, adding uh, section headers and things like that, but left the mathematics part pretty much unchanged from Knuth Tech. So Tech, is not used nearly as much as it is now uh, in these days of what you see is what you get uh, or what you see is what you wished you got. Uh, word processors, uh, or what you see is what you're stuck with, uh, <laughs> word processors, but the notation that Knuth developed for tech is still probably one of the most widely recognized notations for sort of rendering mathematics in ordinary character form. And in Blackboard, we can do tech markup as well as use the structured editor. And tech markup is always marked in Blackboard as beginning with a pair of dollar signs and ending with a pair of dollar signs and having the expression in between. And so if I want to write a squared plus b squared in tech, this is the way I would write it. The caret sign indicates raised up, and so that would be a squared plus b squared, and when I save it, you can see it's actually saved as that, it's actually portrayed as that. If I want to do the square root of a squared plus b squared, well the first thing I would say is, hey I've got this perfectly nice text right here, why not copy and paste it? and square root of a squared plus b squared. And first I'll show you that that actually works. Now this illustrates a couple things about the tech notation. One is that the curly brackets, which you think of as the set brackets, uh, are actually used as grouping characters in the tech language. They, they group an expression together. That's why this square root uh, that I just showed you applied to the entire expression, a squared plus b squared, as opposed to just applying to, say, a. Uh, and that's because square root applies to whatever follows it, and what follows it in this place was inside the bracket grouping a squared plus b squared. So the 
set brackets do not add characters of their own to the final uh, product. They do, however, uh, group things together so that other things can apply to them. The other thing that's worth noting is the backslash uh, has a special meaning in LaTeX, and the most common special meaning uh, is we're introducing a command. And so commands in LaTeX uh, are generally introduced with a backslash, the name of the command. So if I want to do one of the things, for example, that I can do in LaTeX that is hard to do in uh, either of the first two methods we, we looked at is expressions like I've got a sub i squared underscore is the subscript uh, operator in LaTeX plus say b sub j squared and when this comes up what you will see is notice that the i and the square and the j and the square symbol are right on you know right above one another which is the way you've always seen a typeset in your own books right uh, almost impossible to get that to happen if you're working directly in html um, I don't, uh, you can't do it with the uh, editor buttons in Blackboard. You can do it in the structured math editor in Blackboard because in the same place where we had the different patterns for raising and lowering uh, text, there was also one for raised and lowered with, you know, three placeholders instead of just the two. So it is possible to do it there, but it is one of those things that comes up a lot and in most programs is surprisingly difficult to do. Special characters in LaTeX are not hard. Uh, most of the names are going to be similar to the entity names with a few exceptions. Unfortunately, one of those exceptions is very similar uh, to, remember we had alpha derives uh, and we used RARR epsilon. Now, to get Greek letters, well, there are commands. Attack commands with the names of the Greek letters. And so we just put the backslash in front of that to make it a command. So it's similar to the HTML entities, except we're using a backslash instead of ampersand semicolon. The, right, the name for the right arrow is actually changed. It's longer, but it arguably makes more sense. And there we have it. Okay. So the tech is very good with complicated structured expressions. And because when you're editing it, it's just plain text, you can copy, paste, mangle, perforate, whatever you want to do to that text, uh, the same way you would in any text editor to get your next expression up. So it's actually, I find it very useful when I'm doing things like proofs and derivations, where I just need to keep repeating next line, next line, next line, and then go in and make a small change to one uh, sub-expression within LaTeX. Now you might ask, well, if those set brackets are groupers that don't actually contribute anything, how do I get set brackets? Well, there we fall back. On. So if I wanted to do that set epsilon 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, dot, 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 in this notation, well, as we said, to get the Greek letter, you just put the backslash in front of it to make it a command. The dot, dot, dot actually has a LaTeX command as well called linear dots, L dot. And to get these brackets to actually show up, if I save this right now, those brackets will still be treated as grouping. And they'll just disappear. You know what? I'll bet it's L dots and not dot. But we'll find out in a moment. Yep. Okay, so it should have been L dots instead of dot. So let's edit that again.
make that. I hate this little cancel submit thing down at the bottom because it really is trying to take up more of the screen than it should. Okay, L dots. And we apply the same rule, you know, that backslash says you're going to do something special. In this case, putting a backslash in front of those means they're not playing their normal role, they're doing something else. In this case, the something else is to actually be ordinary set brackets. And so there you can see I've got my set brackets. Okay, so what else did I have up in the original list? I do want to mention uh, the Boolean operators and the relational operators as well in LaTeX. So if I want to, if what I want to say is, come on, scroll for me. There we go. Not that much. X is greater than zero and Y is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so there's two things we want to change in order to make this match up what we were looking at. One is I don't want to actually type this out like I'm in a programming language. Well, there's a LEQ is the command uh, in LaTeX for less than or equal. Similarly, there's a GEQ for greater or equal. Um, and then that AND sign is actually called the wedge. And so we'll save that and and so there that's how we get 